artificial intelligence. The race is heating up across the globe. Countries are running the marathon. China too is part of this race, but looks like it's running with shackles on its feet. There is a faint second line on there somewhere. If it focuses, but yeah. So I do apologize <laughs> if I don't sound too well in this video. I was gonna make a video earlier in the week about AI in China, because my PhD is on AI, but it's feeling really sick. I was reading this article about COVID in the UK. As I was reading it, I just come to the sudden realization, wow, China is the best at AI in the world. <gasps> Sounds weird, but I'll explain shortly. So if you've seen my other videos, I've always said that America, they're leading the way for AI and China are catching up. And that's why I decided to do my PhD in China because I, I feel eventually China will catch up. But now I genuinely believe China, they are ahead of the US. And I just went to the AI, the World AI Conference in Shanghai a couple weeks ago, and there were 300,000 people who attended. It was a huge event with companies from China and around the world showcasing their AI. But also there were forums on how to collaborate. So that's one thing you don't really see too much in other countries, not much talk, not much cooperation. So China, they're actively putting laws and safeguarding to make AI fit in society better but it's a bit of a free-for-all in other places. So I do feel it's a lot more organized here in China. And in the event, they also made some really big announcements where they said that there will be 24 AI projects across multiple cities, um, which will be over five and a half billion US dollars in investment. So China, they are taking this extremely seriously. And I was mind blown by the AI technology I saw at this event too. And if you're not from China, if you're not living in China, you might not really know about this technology because you're not using it. And also, the US, they've put a lot of sanctions on Chinese technology and the EU, well, they're about to follow, which is a bit of a shame uh, because I think this technology is really cool. I, I, I've seen this firsthand, how amazing it is. It's given you better accuracy than a lot of American and other foreign technologies. So for example, with mobile phones, electric vehicles, large language models, similar to ChatGPT, for example, right? They've all shown amazing progress in China in the past year. So I think we can use three metrics to compare AI in China and the US. Number one, modeling. Number two, data. Number three, GPUs. And I think China beats the US on two out of three of those metrics. Okay, so we're now gonna look at number one, modeling, okay? And I'd probably say this is the least important of the three. It's still important, but a lot of companies, they use pretty similar architectures, but maybe if you're looking at a very niche area, something new, then this can be quite important, okay? And modeling, this is when you have the data, it means what do you wanna do with the data? What are you trying to predict? And this all comes down to innovation, how smart you can be. When you're looking at a whole country, a whole population, it does come down to money a little bit because it's about how much funding you put into society, how much you put it into the education system. You want a smarter society, right? And so that means you've got more innovation in your society. And we've seen that in China. There's a lot of funding into the universities. Most people, they do go to university in China. And what we've seen is the number of tech graduates in China is just absolutely huge compared to any other country in the world. China leads number one. And not only that, they also publish the most AI papers in the world. And it's not just the quantity, but now it's the quality. Yeah, in the past few years, China, you can see in terms of the SCI index, the, the quality of the journals that they're submitting to is higher on average than the US ones, okay? They've published in more higher SCI papers, okay? And so what this means is that China, they are publishing better research, they have more innovation. So yeah, China easily wins modeling. Okay, and then the second one, which I think the US are actually winning in, is the GPUs, okay? So these are the AI GPUs, I mean, okay? So you need to have GPUs to handle all of this data. So this is a really important one. The US, they've got these really big GPUs, AI GPUs, so the H100s, the A100s, they have uh, an abundance of these. And it's not really through their own, but it's through Taiwan, okay? so. They've uh, taken uh, Taiwan's leading chip manufacturing company and they've put one of their bases 
in Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. Um, and then they are sanctioning China, so they're not letting China import them, okay? So, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And it's a bit of a shame because China, they haven't actually retaliated, right? They've not actually done anything back to the US. They've continuously welcomed cooperation with the US. They really want to do this. And we've seen this in this event, right? They, they want to welcome these AI companies uh, from the US and they want to work with them. Imagine if AI gets into the wrong hands, if it's with the military or governments and they can use this. We can easily get fooled, right, by these deep fakes. Uh, imagine what a government or military could do. So these could be super dangerous for hacks or whatever, right? Recently, the US have proposed, this is not law yet, but they proposed legislation which would stop Chinese students coming to the US to do STEM majors. They want them to do humanities. And they know that because majority of Chinese students who go to the US, they are STEM majors, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Why do you not allow them to go there? A lot of these Chinese graduates who go to the US, they will then work for American companies and they actually help these American companies. They, they, they do so well in AI because of Chinese students. It is just mind blowing why they don't want to have this cooperation and welcoming because here in Shanghai, in my university, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, we have a joint school with Michigan, right? So every semester we have a lot of American students come in. There's also New York University. There is the Duke Kunshan University just next to Shanghai. So there is a lot of Americans always being welcome to come to China, come into Shanghai, wherever. And in America, it seems that they don't really want them there, even though that they've helped with this technology and especially AI. And anyway, with all of these sanctions in place, uh, I think what we've seen in this conference is they're not really working because China, they have improved so much leaps and bounds, right? They have worked domestically. Instead of relying on foreign technology, they can just focus on it themselves, right? There's probably more pressure from the higher ups on these technology companies, they need to make it much better. And they've published it and they've shown that it's much better in so many different fields. Okay guys, it is China one, USA one. We're going into extra time. China scores, they win the World Cup. That is right, because China beat the USA, they beat the rest of the world on data. And this is probably the most important thing when it comes to AI. Without the data, the AI is nothing. When I was working in the UK, we had these data protection laws which were so annoying because we couldn't access a lot of data because of security concerns. And so without this data, well, the models were useless. We need this data. And China, they have an abundance of it. And so their models, even if they're basic models, they are so much better because of the data. Let me give you an example, okay? So. You all know Amazon, maybe you use it on a daily basis. And do you ever notice, or I do anyway, that when we have the recommendations on the website, that a lot of the time, they're pretty useless. They're not really what I wanna buy. And so I often just ignore it. Whereas Taobao, this is China's version of um, Amazon, right? They have so many good recommendations and that whenever I'm using it, I'm like, oh my God, I wanna buy this, I wanna buy this. Oh my God, I never knew about this, I wanna buy this. There's so many good recommendations and that is because of the data. I don't wanna to go too technical on this, but essentially Taobao, Amazon, they use something called a graph neural network, okay? So let's say um, person A and person B, they both buy the same products, okay? Uh, and then person A, they decide to buy a new product. Well, person B, because they probably got similar interests to person A, they'll get recommended that product as well. So you can see, the more people you have, the more similarities you have, then the better the recommendations will be. And China, they have a lot of niche products, and even for the niche products, right, they'll have a lot of people. They might have millions of people buying that, so they've got the data, whereas Maybe with Amazon, they don't have that. So they might only have a few people who would buy that. And so if they want to get recommended something, these might not be too good. And so I've got some uh, statistics here, which just are mind blowing to show you why data is so important, right? So Taobao, uh, they reported that its AI recommendations, they drove 26% of its sales. Uh, Taobao, they also processed 10 billion recommendations daily, so they have so much data. There was a study, okay, by Marketplace Pulse, and they found that only 35% of Amazon's frequently bought together recommendations feature, they were actually relevant 
Uh, and then Taobao, their click-through rates are 40% for some recommendation features, meaning uh, people are very interested in this. Whereas Amazon, it's only around 1% to 2%. Very, very low. People, they don't really care about it. And then finally, AI recommendations drive over 26% of Taobao's gross merchandise volume. But it's 15% for Amazon. And so this is why data is so important. It doesn't really matter too much how good your model is. It's about the data. In China, they just have so much of it. And also, with such a large population in China, they're all using the same apps as well. They're not really using these foreign apps. Amazon exists in China, but no one really uses it, okay? Especially for shopping. You've got Taobao, you have Pinduoduo, and you have a billion internet users using these apps. So this brings us back to the beginning of the video. COVID, yes. Okay, so I was reading this paper about uh, some big research into the UK's COVID system, all right? And the, the UK government, they had this app where they recommended everyone to install it uh, during the peak of the pandemic, and this would allow you to track COVID. So if you were nearby someone who had COVID, it would ping up on your phone saying you were a high risk that you might have COVID. Okay, so researchers can use this, okay? They can use epidemiological models to find out the spread of the virus. And so this is the first study, I believe, which looked at how COVID has spread. It would be even better if they had more data. You see, they had only 18 million people using it at its very peak, which is a lot, which is very good, but it's only 25% thereabouts of the, the UK population. So maybe there are certain demographics, maybe there are certain regions in the UK who might refuse it. Maybe young people, they don't care about COVID, they might not want to download this app. And so we might not be able to get useful information with those people, right? Whereas in China, well, we have one app and we have a, a lot more people using it all across the country. And that is WeChat. Yes, so you needed to use WeChat to basically enter any place. You needed to scan it, right? You needed to scan these QR codes to enter supermarkets, shopping malls, if you want to go grocery shopping, whatever, right? You needed to go to any building, you needed to scan a QR code with WeChat. I don't know the data, it's not there, but I'd imagine it's above 90%, maybe close to 100%, right? Because everyone needed to register. And if you had COVID, they'll be able to know who your first contact or who your second contact was, and they'll be able to effectively uh, trace it. And China will be able to plan for the next pandemic way better than any other country, because of the data, yeah. And this is so much more useful than any other type of model that you could ever ask for, right? And it all comes down to the data, okay? So they will be able to know different populations, different demographics, how the virus spreads, how quickly it spreads, and what can we do to avoid the next pandemic? What can we do uh, to stop the spread as much, okay? We don't need to have this zero COVID lockdown kind of thing. We can do a different strategy. Okay, because they'll be better prepared for it. They have this data. All right then guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll be with you next time. Hope you enjoyed that. I will be doing a lot more traveling in the next month or so as I'll be nearly graduating with my PhD. So uh, see you around for those videos. Bye-bye, take care.